In the 21st century, we are bombarded by movies of superheroes. Left, right and center. Iron Man, Superman, Black Panther, Wonder Woman, Batman, Spider-Man, Captain Marvel, The Hulk, The Wolverine. The list goes on. But one thing we all know is that they are all fictional. Over 2,000 years ago, the legendary Son of Man was born, the legendary Jesus Christ, the living legend himself, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Alpha and Omega, the preciousness of heaven, who stripped down from his glory and power to enter the womb of a woman to save a dying world that hated him. Let's look at the life of Jesus. His life was supernatural. One glance from him and water blushed in the wine. One word from him and demons trembled. One raised palm from him and storms got back in their places. One touch from him and a little boy's lunch became a banquet for over 5,000. One look from him and Peter's mother-in-law got healed. One conversation from him and a blind man received his sight. Nobody can do that but Jesus. But look at him in his life. Never a man lived like him. Look at him in his miracles. Look at him changing water to wine at a blush. Look at him being baptized in Jordan. And the Trinity gathers together on earth for the first time since earth was created. Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. Jesus in the water. And the voice of God speaking, this is my son. Look at him in his miracles as he feeds the 5,000 as he walks up to a funeral procession and stops it and returns the dead back to the house from whence it came. Watch him and look at him. Look at him as he multiplies fish and loaves and feeds 5,000. Look at him as he spit upon eyes and the blind see and the lame walk. Because there's something strange and unusual about this man, Jesus Christ. He heals the sick. He gives sight to the blind. He makes lame men to walk again. He makes deaf men to speak or uh, to talk again, to hear again. He's able just by his mere presence to change the atmosphere. He's on his way to Jairus' house to heal Jairus' little daughter who's sick unto death. And on the way, he's interrupted by a woman with an issue of blood. She's been suffering 12 long years. The Bible says she spent all she had and instead of getting better, she grew worse. But she heard that Jesus was in the crowd. And she knew she would not have an opportunity to stand before him and talk to him because of the stench from her blood flow. But she said, if I could just touch his clothes, if I could just grab his garment, I know that I will be made whole. The scripture says when Jesus stopped, the blood stopped. And he says, somebody touched me. The disciples said, Master, all these people here, somebody's bound to touch you. Jesus said, I didn't say somebody bumped into me. I said somebody touched me. Because when they touched me by faith, I felt power, virtue run out of me. And if you're here this morning and you just touch him, reach out by faith, the same power that he gave that woman with an issue of blood, can flow in your life this morning. But you know what your problem is? 
you think you're too good to ask and if you never ask Jesus will skip right over you and bless somebody sitting next to you who got sense enough to know they need mercy and God will give you what you need if you got sense enough to ask for it you have not because you ask not but if we need his help we got to ask him for it God knows what your situation is God knows what you're going through God knows what you are up against but God will not get involved in it until you ask him. God will come to the rescue. He's at the edge of his seat getting ready to jump in your situation but he will stay hands off until you ask him. He got the power. You just got to have the faith. He can work the miracle. You just need to have faith. His life, this, this self-sacrificing son of God had a supernatural life. Then he had a sinless life. He lived a sinless life. It was not possible for him to sin. He could not be tempted in word or in deed because he is the sinless son of God. Because everybody before him who came could not save us. And the reason they could not save us as a ransom is because they were just as the ones they came to preach to. Let me see if I can help us with that. Uh, Adam was the first sinner who disobeyed God. Our first parents could not save us. Uh, Noah couldn't do it. Abraham couldn't do it. Jacob couldn't do it. Because Jacob stole his brother's blessing and tricked him out of his birthright. Moses couldn't do it because Moses got angry. Abraham couldn't do it. Noah couldn't do it. David couldn't do it because David took another man's wife to bed. Nobody could redeem us. But then God sent Jesus born of a woman in Bethlehem of Judea perfect sacrifice sinless without any guile without any malice without sin he came for us as a perfect brothers and sisters I'm glad about that because the sins of my past could not be atoned for with somebody as sinful as me I need a savior I said I need a savior if I had needed money God would have sent me an economist if I needed learning God would have sent me a philosopher but since I needed saving God sent me a savior born in Bethlehem he was born of a virgin that, that's historical evidence that's, that's biblical evidence to prove that he was born in Bethlehem reared in Nazareth baptized in the Jordan performed miracles in a desert place healed the sick raised the dead gave sight to the blind made the lame walk cured a woman with an issue of blood died one Friday, got up early one Sunday morning, seated at the right hand of God with power,
coming back again in his glory I believe that when I'm down and can't see my way all I've got to do is call on the name of Jesus and that name cheers me in my dark hour that name is company when I'm all by myself that name is strength in my weakness light in my darkness power when I don't know which way to turn there's something about the name Jesus there's power in the name of Jesus there's deliverance in the name of Jesus there's salvation in the name of Jesus there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved except by the name Jesus there are a lot of things that are true that do not save Jesus Christ is not one of the ways to God Jesus is the only way Jesus is not a part of the truth he is the truth Jesus is not someone you add to make your life richer Jesus is life he said I am is come that you might have life and have it more abundantly I am the door of the sheepfold if you come in any other way you come in as a thief and a robber I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live again and he that lives and believes in me shall never die I am the way the truth and the life I am the bread of life I am the water of life he is the fountain from which all else flows he is the root out of which all else grows he has nothing without him everything is about him in him we live we move and we have our being Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever there is none like him he's in a class all by himself the more I call him the sweeter it sounds Jesus early in the morning Jesus at noonday Jesus in the midnight hour there's power in that name there's strength in that name there's joy there's hope there's peace there's deliverance in the name of Jesus and, and we many of us have been to Calvary for pardon but we haven't been to Pentecost for power and so we're kind of timid and sheepish about what we believe because we don't really know if it's true or not but the reason I preach with power is because I know he was born of a virgin that, that's historical evidence that's, that's biblical evidence to prove that he was born in Bethlehem reared in Nazareth baptized in the Jordan performed miracles in a desert place healed the sick raised the dead gave sight to the blind made the lame walk cured a woman with an issue of blood died one Friday got up early one Sunday morning seated at the right hand of God with power coming back again in his glory I believe that so I preach it 
with power. When you love, you give, and you run the risk of being rejected. He came unto his own. I wish I had a Bible reader. And his own received him not, but to as many as received him, to them gave he power to be called the sons of God. God gave everything he had in Jesus Christ. Jesus came and became my sacrifice. He died in my place. He took my place on the cross. He died as a ransom for my sin. He became my substitute. He went to the cross for me. And God gave his uniquely born son, Jesus. Now some of y'all look like you're ashamed to call that name. But there's salvation in that name. There's power in that name. There's joy and peace in that name. There's hope and wholeness in that name. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved except the name Jesus. That at the name of Jesus every knee must bow. Every tongue confess. His love is global. His love is sacrificial. And his love is personal. Whosoever. Whosoever. Calvinism says that Jesus died only for the elect. But John 3.16 said God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever drunk come on come on come on come on liar come on adulterer come on backslider whoever you are whosoever wills let him St. Paul nailed it when he said rejoice in the Lord and again I say rejoice. James comes back and says count it all joy. The secret of Christian joy hangs on two words. Then and when, John 20, 20 says, then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then and when, when you see the Lord, then you will be glad. When you see him high and lifted up and his train fills the temple, then you will be glad. When disease attacks your body, you will see him as the great physician, and then you will be glad. When you are burdened beyond your bearing, and you see him as your burden bearer, then you will be glad. When you feel lonely and forsaken, and indeed you may be, and you see him as the friend that sticketh closer than a brother, saying, I will never leave you nor forsake you, even to the ends of the earth, then will you be glad. When you are in a financial crisis and you see him as your source, as your Jehovah Jireh, as the Lord who supplies, then you will see the rivers of living water whose leaf will not wither and you will be glad. Mary saw him as a baby in Bethlehem's manger. The disciples saw him as a great teacher, as a rabbi. The Pharisees thought of him as a demonized heretic. Rome saw him as an insurrectionist too dangerous to live. But when we see him, him as he is. He is the bright and the morning star. He is the king of all kings. He is the Lord of all lords. He is the light of the world. He is the Lord of glory and our soon coming king. God is our strength.